across her back like this. And when she needs it on, she leans into it. So it kind of wraps around her over. And I'm sitting here, either legs out or legs in. So you can and if she needs again. more, I can put a hand on it and pull it on hard. Um, and you can see, if you're standing right where Lynn is, <laughs> how much, even without a sail on there, the vang does affect. It's pushing the boom forward. Oh, wow. Can you see? Yeah. Here it is. Oh, yeah. You can just see, this just, just right here, man, like almost an inch. Right. <laughs> so now that's flattening the bottom bottom portion of the sail. Not, not as much at the top, but that is your depowering tool because we don't have a back stack. And it's a big, it's a big deal. Now, if we over tightened our lowers, the middle of the sail or the middle of the mast wouldn't go forward as much because they're being pulled back by this. So you can control your overbend. You can actually whale it so hard you start to get vertical wrinkles, overbend wrinkles, <coughs> and you can stop that by putting a bit of lower shroud on. But that is your, this is our, I call it the clutch. You know, that, that's my throttle. This is my clutch for those of us who drive a four speed or five speed. That's your, that's your tool. And, and again, it's not just this person doing it. They, she, they're going to be in control of out of it. But if she can't get more on, the trimmer can sit here and put a hand on it. In his spot, coming in on a lay line. As a trimmer, <coughs> I've got the jib sheet here. We're going to talk later about why to use continuous sheets. So you can tell it, I don't have to reach up here to get the jib sheet. Yeah. I've sailed on scissors. <laughs> Nobody else probably has except Lynn. <laughs> for, but for right now, we're going to make, make some continuous sheets. So, but, so we, we talked about we talked about the jibe set, but in most cases you're going to do a bear away set, which is basically you're going to ease the main, you're going to turn down, and you're going to continue on starboard. Okay, that's a bear away set. So as we come off, I'm going to take the jib sheet and I'm going to bump it out about 18 inches because we're turning down, so the jib's still working for us, right? And that opens some things up. But notice with my sheet, I've got spinnaker halyard, the tack line, and the spin sheet aft of the jib sheet. You don't ever want to pin it over here. Things go bad. Okay. So now we've eased off a little bit. We get within the three bolt length circle. We start to turn down. I'm going to pull the pole out. The trimmer is going to pin it out all the way. And Angie will go from there to here, gather the sail. She's, she's probably got her knee here. I'm not even sure. But she's kind of keeping it on the deck so the head can go out quick. And I will stand up, depending on the breeze, and start pulling halyard. As soon as, as soon as the halyard gets to the point that it's at the spreader, I pull both tack and halyard at the same time. If you don't do that, you can go all the way with the halyard. The sail stays back here. Pull the tack line on. Pop, it goes. All that making sense? From that point, I uncleat the jib, I jump in the hole, I grab my further line, and I pull it right here. I don't even worry about the cleat. I pull it right here. Get the jib out of the way so the kite stays full. Spin around, and start talking about what's happening. So you're still us. holding the roller throwing line up. Yeah, I generally have my hand on it. <coughs> and then once, you know, once things settle down, <coughs> we figure out where BJ is. Then I can start going, okay, I can start cleaning up, and I can start pulling this through. And then I'm going to take my, my spin halyard and I'm going to drop coil it down in, in here on top of itself. I'm going to do the same thing with the tack line, the pole line, but I'm constantly looking here. If So now it kites up, we're ripping along, boat starts to heal a little bit because we've got a puff. To help Jordan turn down, I'm going to pop up on this rig to lean the boat to weather a little bit and drive down a little bit. But I'm going to stay in this general area.
driving. Can I ask you something, Bill? Yes. Real quick, because we have the bang on going up wind. Do we mm -hmm. need to make sure we get that off before we bear away? Just completely. You'll bear, yes. But then when we turn, when we get off, as we bear away, it goes off all the way. Okay. Once we get settled, you may look like this. If you look twisted off at the top, you'll just reach forward. So until that top back is about five degrees out. And I can talk about that on the water today, too. How much, how much to pull the bang on because you want to control the leech tension when you're going down there, to try and match the curvature or the leech of the main to the leech of the spinner. We have now, we have a big give up at that point, right? So just like yesterday, we talked about matching those leeches so that we've got flow. The spinnaker's not just dragging you downwind in these boats, it's actually creating some high pressure, low pressure, like you talked about. The engine's sitting generally on the weather side of the boat, so you can see the, spin, the whole spinnaker. Um, and that's until you get up to, like, over six, eight, right, this is what, what I call VMG mode, or working your way downwind mode, not, not in reaching mode. Um, so, but I'm constantly looking back and I'm looking at puffs. So, obviously, if the kite's there and the main's here, I'm looking out here. This is my breeze area. Um, if I see a puff that's coming to the back of the boat, it's generally going to pass behind us. I'll tell Jordan we got to jive and get in front of it to stay in the puff. Uh, conversely, if it looks like there's a puff that's not going to get down to us, I'll come up on the weather rail and say, okay, we light it up. Let's get up there to that puff and then we can bring the fleet off. But I'm always looking behind, constantly. He's um, the master. <coughs> the Mark master is down. the master at that. Looking back. <laughs> when he's not driving. Well, he's a laser sailor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, it's embedded in those two's yeah. brains about not only driving, but trimming and balancing the boat and finding the next puff and figuring out whether it's a head or a leg. But that comes later, right? Right. So, <laughs> I've decided to call for a jibe. The kite is here. Sorry. It's okay. So, Angie, who was sitting here, trimming, is basically going to reach to the side. Or she's trimming from here, right? She's going to reach to the side. She's going to pull all the slack out of the lazy sheet, the current lazy sheet. And it, it's going to pop. And when we start the jibe, her move is to go knees to the deck, so she's braced in between this tow rail and her knees. And she's just going to pull as hard as she possibly can. <coughs> the only thing she can't do from that position is stand up too early. So Jordan has to say, here comes the boom. So she stays down, the boom goes, clears her head. Now the boat's rocked over. As soon as the kite fills, she sits straight down, the boat rocks up. At the same time, once I call for the jive, I immediately step to this rail, brace my foot against this little, whatever it is, knuckle, in the back of the shroud, and I start pulling on this sheet, this lazy sheet. I'm helping her pull it around, but I'm not just pulling it straight around. Once the clue gets out here, I go down to my knee, and that pops the leech of the sail. So it pulls the sail through, and it pops and releases, Pretty much in the spot, if she's keeping up with me on the slack, then it fills and you're gone. Now both of us are on this rail. Boat's really healed over. I jump to about here. Boat flattens out and we're gone. I don't know what he's doing back there during that. Uh, Controlling the main and moving with us. Yeah. <coughs> Anything you want to add to a jive? No, it's pretty good. We talked a little bit about takedowns yesterday. When you get to the lure mark, uh, the trimmer on our boat, Angie, is the one generally pulling the sail in. If it's a windward takedown, so we're coming in on, on port jive, she'll, she'll be flying it here, and she'll reach over, and she'll start pulling the sheet around, or I'll sometimes be in front of her doing that. 
until she can reach out and get this sheet. And she lets go there, pulls here, so the kite has come, come along the windward side of the boat. She starts sucking the foot. Once I see she's got about half the foot, I blow the pole in the tack, and that all comes back into the boat. And then she yells for the halyard, pulls it down, sucks it in, <coughs> relatively minimum cussing. We turn up with her, we go. One, you can always ease your outhaul a little bit to back things out, but it's, you know, I'm still of the impression that more projection is better than a full sail. And only do it if you're on the run, or on your last run, because inevitably you're going to forget before you go back up when you go back on. What are you saying about continuous jib sheets versus... Okay. The beauty of, of it is the jib sheets, I'm not going to say never, will rarely get on the other side of all this gear. Okay. If, if it's there. If, if they're discontinuous sheets like these, when you get down to the lured mark, after all the jiving and roll tacking that you've done, that's where the tails of your jib sheets are. Okay. And as you're turning the boat and trying to pull the jib out, you don't want to be... It's so much better to have them. They can actually be that short and living right there. So all you got to do, no matter what jibe you're on, is uncleat your furler and pull in the middle and the jib will come out to whatever side it needs to be on and live. So you, you don't have to worry about the cleats or anything like that. <coughs> Continuous jib sheets are, are better, but make sure that you're rigged properly when you do it. That this is all behind. Cool? Um, I like that you, these guys keep their sail Don Corey stuff in a basket. Um, we, for some reason, never did. And it always just kind of lives in the bottom of the boat. Well, it'll live in the bottom of the boat after the first side. Right. <laughs> so. Some people actually have bags that hang here and get yeah. pulled to the side. Some people have just a, yeah. a net right here that, so that it doesn't get all the way to the floor. If, do, if it does have water in it, the water will drain out of the pipe and dry a little bit when you're going upwind. Um, but that's always nice. It's always nice to keep things sure that your jib track on either side are in the same place. We measured on, on hole number 50, figured out that that one's further forward than that one. We all got so used to counting the number of screws and the number of holes back and didn't realize that they were, they 